welcome back to another episode of Healing Together Podcast. I know it's been a minute. It hasn't actually been a minute. It's been, I think we maybe missed one week. Um, but for the first time, we're doing a video along with the audio. So if you are listening to this on like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you have to check out our YouTube um, channel, my YouTube channel, Patience Tamara, so that you can see the full video. And today I have a special, special guest. We've been trying to do this for a minute, but um, you know, things happen when they're supposed to. So I'm so freaking excited to finally welcome my older sister. You guys already um, were introduced to my younger sister, Madison. Check out her episode. And then in today's episode, I have my older sister, Charity, here with me. Hello. So, um, we're just really about to chit chat and check in. We do check ins pretty often. We actually live together now, which has been so great. Maybe we could talk about that a little bit more too. Okay. Um, but before we get started, I do have like one little intro question. I, I ain't telling okay. you. <laughs> okay, okay. But I do ready, one intro question. Um, so, who are you in this moment and what is something that is no longer serving this version of yourself you might have to talk a little bit about okay that. um who am i <laughs> i'm still figuring that out i'm not gonna lie i don't even think i have a definite um definition for who i am i'm still learning you know just just growing with myself and you know seeing what i like what i don't like what serves me what doesn't um, but I think that one of the biggest things that does not serve me, uh, this version of myself right now, is worrying. Um, mm, I think that I probably stress myself out more by simply worrying about things that don't even happen. Uh, and I've just really been taking time to sit with myself and think about what I need and what I actually like. Like what I feel feeds my soul and makes me feel you know, just happy to be alive and happy to be up doing. Like, what do I like? What does charity like? So I'm still learning that every day. And uh, it's a beautiful journey so far, you know. I've so learned. what does charity like? So I like crocheting. <laughs> I do like crocheting. Um, I like things that kind of keep my mind moving. So um, I love random facts just like different just about the ocean animals food um i definitely enjoy talking about food like any facts i can have about food health nutrition i'm definitely on that um and herbs and just how the earth actually helps us that's super uh you know important to me and i, I find it fascinating so that's something that i can just like study all day um what else I like hiking. I just recently discovered that I like hiking and I just like hiking. being out with nature a lot more. We um, do that together. I love hiking. Definitely more, like we have mm -hmm. done a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, definitely want to get out more and just see what we can find. I've been noticing that um, I feel like I'm getting more signs from nature, like certain birds and ladybugs and just different things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I look at that as confirmation that I'm on the right path. So um, it's always beautiful just to see, have those little moments. I feel like where you can connect with nature, it's a beautiful thing. So. Nice. Um, yeah. This girl also cooks. I do cook. She I did, love cooking, right? She did right? mention um, food a little bit, but this girl can cook. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. she, this is, this is Queen Chef. Okay, right here. Yes, she cooks flesh. most of my meals, um, <laughs> which I'm so grateful for, especially being pregnant. <laughs> being pregnant now, I'm looking forward to those postpartum meals mm -hmm. too. Um, but yeah, ever since, like, I can remember you've been in the kitchen. It's true. Like, mom's little shadow. Right. <laughs> in That's the true. kitchen. <laughs> trying to figure things out, trying to, you know. See what's going on. Right? <laughs> yeah, going on all yeah. of this stuff awesome yeah. well today we're just going to like, chit chat for real she actually so this morning um i had like a midwife appointment and i, I did a couple of things 
and Charity just she you did your own thing today. Yeah. After a few too. days of not feeling too yeah. hot. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like that sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> so. And you have to honor those spaces and I'm mm -hmm. I'm really proud of you for honoring where you were, you know, and just giving your your yourself some time to mm -hmm. like yeah, I'm I'm not feeling good and right. that's okay. So I'm gonna just lay in my bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and oftentimes we feel guilty about doing that, but that's an important part of taking care of ourselves Definitely. and pouring into ourselves, like doing that without judgment and without guilt and without shame. So very proud of you, girl. And you doesn't have to get to that point where you're like, oh God, like you just can't get up. Like you, you know, I'm trying to get to the point where it's like, okay, if you need some rest, you know, take some rest. Like you don't have to be completely exhausted to the point of just not being able to do anything because then I start like prioritizing that rest over everything else because I don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, I'm definitely, you know, trying to regulate it better um, so that it doesn't feel like I'm just down, you know, yeah. for days or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I also wanted to talk to you about, uh, you said postpartum meals. Yes. What do you even like to eat? I mean, <laughs> I know you eat like what the things that I cook, like, you yeah. know, lean meats and stuff. But mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular that you feel like you're going to want? Um, yeah, you know, it's sure. so funny. I asked Zoe this question like a couple of days ago mm -hmm. and I didn't think about it for myself. So I, I feel like I'm going to want a lot of carbs but I need to find alternatives to that mm -hmm. because I, I I can't be eating a ton of carbs right. but um you know I love me some spaghetti mm -hmm. I love spaghetti um, and I'm thinking like I love me some fried chicken <laughs> mm. I, I probably will want more like soul food type that's of what I was thinking but like at the same time though because i've been doing my own research um as a fine auntie over here mm -hmm. so i know like the first couple of days like you may not like pooping may be difficult so it's like right. i don't want to load you up on like right. mac and cheese and like you know just like yeah. hardcore stuff i still want you i don't want you to feel like i'm trying to be like your dietitian or anything no i appreciate but it i appreciate that i'm That's like I, I just mean. i still want to make some good stuff like it's not yeah. just gonna be like bland but i don't want it the first couple of days you know just to see mm -hmm. how you take it how it feels and i also i'm gonna bring in the fruit juice now yeah. so i think these will actually help oh my gosh. and so i made one celery juice and one carrot juice it's getting um, close I made 16 up. ounces of each okay these are the juices we got these cute little jars from amazon so amazon sponsor us <laughs> right right <laughs> I can't even hear. I, I caught on all that. But um, I think a couple of shots of those um, will help, you know, during mm. that time. Like just different juices. Uh, we're going to try the carrot and celery and see how it adjusts with us. But um, I want to try some fruit ones and just some different. So if you're not really always in the mood to actually eat something heavy or you need help breaking stuff down mm -hmm. instead of having to like take a laxative or a stool softener, that could like naturally help. Okay, so, that's amazing. So See, I didn't even think about that mm -hmm. aspect of postpartum meals. Like, it can't be heavy. Mm -hmm. Even though I might be craving something super filling and, mm -hmm. and full of carbs, loaded with carbs. You're right. I, I will have a little bit of trouble probably, you know, pooping for, mm -hmm. the, first, <laughs> for the first couple of days or, or a week out. So immediately when, when you started talking about that I was thinking about Mediterranean food because mm -hmm. it's like super fresh they do right. like a lot of fresh salads mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that so I mean, and it'll be summertime mm -hmm. so like yeah maybe just like some really nice fresh yeah, salads nice. I definitely um, planned on that having like some different just toppings and mm -hmm. you kind of whatever you're in the mood for mm -hmm. can get it together like wraps um, stuff like that mm -hmm veggie wraps i really like seaweed i've really been like addicted to seaweed i don't really like seaweed. i mean what, on the sushi do you like it yeah i do like it sushi, but like but the like seaweed that. like crisp or whatever mm -hmm. i don't like those see i i kind of like them <laughs> which i was shocked i was like oh that's not so bad but yeah, maybe i just had yeah. a, the wrong brand i don't know i was mm -hmm. like 
I'm thinking of wraps. <laughs> like, what wraps can we use? We have, well, I, you know, like wraps. the um, spinach wraps. Mm -hmm. The I, I have recently did some rolls with the uh, rice paper for mm -hmm. like the spring rolls mm -hmm. those were really good because i know mm -hmm. you like the veggie yeah, rolls love, those are really good yes, veggies, so we can definitely rolls. do those yeah, like some different things yeah, yeah that would so be good. cool i'm I gonna love save it. some stuff i'm not gonna cook it to later mm -hmm. on so it could be like fresh like mm -hmm. something brand new but yeah the veggie spring rolls that sounds so good so how are you feeling i know when i moved to south carolina it was it was it was different, you know. Mm -hmm. It took an adjustment period. I missed my friends, because mm -hmm. um, just like me, you moved here really not knowing anyone besides family. Right, that's true. So, how are you feeling about the move? Do you regret it at all? Like, where are you at? So, I went through a lot of different feelings and emotions throughout this move um, because I had to realize, like. First, what I felt like I missed, I was like, is it even nourishing me? Like the relationships and the energies that I feel like I was, I would be around, you know what I mean? All the time or whatever. Like, is that really what I want? Um, and it just, it just took a lot of self-reflecting. Like, what do you want? Like, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? Um, and who do you want to you know who do you want to be around so i was like i don't really i just took kind of took this time to just get to know myself better and spend time with y'all with family mm -hmm. because i felt like i've always just been on go and like hyper fixated on working grinding hustling all the time non-stop so and it's still times where i have to go into that zone uh, it's, it's kind of like another place for me but that's one of the things that helps me tap into some uh, the mo the most great mom greatest moments in my life uh, so it's kind of like just trying to find that balance of when I need to be in hyperdrive and when I need to just simply cherish the the moment in the current like what I'm in in the now so I'm really working on that and that's what I've really been focused on just trying to really feel my emotions and feel my thoughts and really just process everything and just enjoy the moment you know what I mean so that's what <clears throat> what I've been focused on and it's been a beautiful journey so far I was scared because I'm like I just didn't know what to expect um, I don't know anybody I still really don't know anybody mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I'm noticing here um, I feel like a lot of the black women are very supportive like automatically just giving compliments happy you know and, and that I'm not gonna say it wasn't like that you know in the DMV but I felt like it was just so it's so like every time you go out like somebody is like hey like you might have been thinking it but not like i feel like in the dmv you you might be like well i don't know they looking mean or you know you might not they might not want to say something because you may look unapproachable yeah. but out here they just go for it like your hair is cute girl and that's it and that's, and i just want to tell you that so it's like that has meant i felt like i already made a few friends here and there like when i go get my nails done and stuff like that so it's always a vibe so i'm just here for the journey so far so good so beautiful yeah, well i'm so definitely. glad to hear that that's how you're feeling that's that's amazing yes i love it that's how a new move i should feel i think it's a time for you to do a lot of self-reflection because you're in a completely new space mm -hmm. in new spaces it brings forth um just new feelings new thoughts mm -hmm. um yeah and you're able to see yourself in just a different light too mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying right, like true. when you're in a space for so long that's that you're comfortable in that's probably you know toxic in many ways and dramatic mm -hmm. in some ways and you know um com makes you complacent in some ways mm -hmm, when you move out of that <clears throat> out of that space it's like you have like new glasses on mm -hmm. maybe like I don't know the fog somehow clears so that's yeah. awesome I wanted to tap into this hyper like drive and motivation that you have because you've always been that way mm -hmm. like since since I since I can remember from like I was probably like seven so that made you nine, nine. I remember you always having this like 
determination to to just do things I don't want to say right but kind of sort of right mm -hmm. like you had this motivation and drive you wanted to I think make everyone proud mm -hmm. you know so where do you think that stems from is it being the older sibling or is it just something like within you you're also a Virgo She's right true yes <laughs> <laughs> so yeah a Virgo Virgo too yes uh, definitely <laughs> but um I don't want to name it for you or mm -hmm. anything but I'm just wondering where you think that comes from Firstly, I definitely really do resonate with being a Virgo. Like, I don't find it, like, offensive or anything because that is how I am. Like, it's just, it is. But um, I think it's a few different things. Um, it's a few different things. I think in the beginning, it was more so me just wanting to, um, wanting everyone to be proud so that it, as a safety precaution, as a, mm. as a, uh, I guess, a safety mechanism, um, because ain't nothing gonna go wrong for the most part if everybody is calm, mm -hmm, chill. Mm -hmm. I think um, being younger, I got to, I witnessed a lot of, a lot of black people um, and their emotional control or lack thereof at mm -hmm. times. So it's like kind of in i feel like in that era it was like you didn't really know what you want to get i mean you never know what you're going to get but like in that situation being that young i just used to observe everything and you know just try to pay attention to everything and i felt like we i would be the safest we would be the safest you know if that was one you know component that i had you know mm -hmm. to carry um when I was younger and then I feel like as I got older into like middle school high school once I started cooking and like competitively cooking I was like alright I want to be the best now I decided if I was going to choose to compete I was going to be the best like whatever it was that I was doing I'm like I'm gonna be the best at this because that was it just it's just a fire in me I can't even describe it that just I just wanted to be the best um and if not the best just always learning basically so if I wasn't it, it, it wasn't really about being the best it was about learning you know as much as I could and knowing the most as much as I could like I just want to know all the information there is to know like I wanted I just wanted to be you know or just learning more if not educating someone on on it then learning more about it so um wow. i don't know it was just something in me like people ask me what my why is and it's like i feel like i don't have a specific like a word i can say that would be my why or even a person it it's just something in me that keeps me going and being I always say this because uh, I'm bipolar, being bipolar, you know, people that know me will be like, don't use that to define you. And but I'm like the care it's, it's more so it's, it's just like characteristics that are factual like it it just is what it is and you have you know uh manic you can have manic episodes or depressive episodes for long or short periods of time so i noticed when i started working i will always like hyper fixate on something being younger in school it's like you can't you know you have a hobby or you have you know cheerleading or sports or you have something you know that can kind of feed that but as i got older i'm like okay you know, I had to find something else. So, um, I feel like when I am manic, it's, it's crazy because it helps you tap into some of your strongest, uh, qualities. Mm. So it, it's kind of like you do some of your best work in the wor worst moments of your life. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, it's like a blessing and a curse. It's like, right? I feel like people that are genius or have, like, that component in them that it you have to kind of go there. Like, it's just, it, it has to happen. And, you know, just learning myself and learning how to navigate through these episodes better, it has, it's helped me to be able to actually still be able to focus on my life and what I like to do and not just hyper fixating on you know something because I feel like it's the right thing to do 
like the charity from 10 years ago i was so i would say what can i say 10 years yeah about 10 years I was so like, go to work, go to school, go to college, do everything, just do it right straight on the line. Like I would not do anything. Right. No, I would she, not do anything. She went to the army. She, <laughs> right. When she, I was 17. Yes. So, yeah. But it's a learning experience. And, you know, I just take it day by day. Like it, you know, I'm just learning myself. I'm learning what triggers me. I'm learning what, you know, makes me feel better or what makes me I guess what I feel like maybe my negative um, components from bipolar disorder, whatever that may be, that it, I just try to find what can feed that, like what can counteract that, I guess, to balance myself out, really. So, hmm. yeah. You said something that really stood out to me. That was so beautiful, by the way. Thank just you. seeing you, like, <laughs> just you communicate so openly, that's made me really happy. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I can tell you're comfortable. That's awesome. Um, it's couch is but <laughs> you guys see yeah. the vibes. Yes, the vibes. yes. Um, so you mentioned one thing, which is something that I've been sitting with. You said a lot of the people around me will say, "Don't let um, like bipolar uh, disorder define you." Mm -hmm. And that was I probably said that to you, not directly to you mm -hmm. but i feel like in conversation that may have come up right overall. because that's what that's what i often think and mm -hmm. i'm like you know sometimes um i feel like when i'm thinking of maddie and how young she is and how a lot of people her age sometimes i do feel like they use these labels mm -hmm. as a means to self identify you know mm -hmm. and when you said that i really had to my ego needed to be checked because i think there's truth we talk about this all the time there there, mm -hmm. are, tr there are truths in everything right pretty exactly. much um so i think there's truth in in what i just said in that i do think sometimes it can be um uh detrimental more so in those who are like really deep in that developmental phase of mm -hmm. life like 18 like 15 to 18 you know i feel mm -hmm. like those years are really really important um and i think sometimes when you are diagnosed so early on a lot of these kids will just run with it and be like well you know this characteristic is why i'm like that but they won't dig deeper you know, mm -hmm. into like, how can this characteristic be a superpower for me? Like mm -hmm, kind of how right. you were talking about in some of those manic episodes, it's like you create some of your best things mm -hmm. and you probably feel so empowered in those moments. Um, so what I'm trying to get at is how can people, and this is, this is obviously your own perspective, um, in your own um, based on your own life and, and the people that love you but how can people show up for um, their family members loved ones friends you know partners how can we better show up for them in those uh, moments where they may be having an episode or they may be fully engulfed in identifying um, themselves as this as this uh, mental illness. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I definitely understand. Okay, cool. So, okay. You remember the Firstly, question? with Mad. Okay, I mean not with Maddie, but just with that. As far as this new generation. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe sometimes using i guess mental illness as a crutch mm. look from from other people from the outside looking in i feel like when if people if if it does seem that way it's more so a, a protective measure honestly for you to for them to be able to communicate like for you to be able to have a better understanding of how to care for them, you know, in the event that something does happen or, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it, 
I feel like everyone educating themselves more about these disorders, um, not necessarily to tell the other person like, oh, you're feeling this or you're doing that, but just to have a better idea. Because if you don't, if you're not really going through it, it's hard to understand uh, someone else's thought process of what's going on in their head and how they perceive things and how, you know, certain traumas literally can make you tap into an old memory of something traumatic that happened to you and if your body and your mind goes to that place again wherever you're at you know what I mean it's like it would be cool to have somebody that kind of knows how to help you know in in that situation but you may not have anyone so I understand wanting to be like hey this is you know a part of the characteristics that I carry so that you can understand if something goes off or that you may not understand um as a normal person you know what I mean it, it, it I guess it's just like a just so you know like just you know just a heads up mm -hmm. as well like sometimes you might be thinking this person is tripping but you're tripping too like you gotta you know what I mean so everybody and it's easier to convince someone else that they may need to get help if you've done it like hey well I tried this um you know I tried speaking to a therapist one day and it you know and it worked for me coming from a place of actually doing it versus being like this is what you need and it's like how do you know that's what I need if you've never even tried to you know go right. through it it's like you know, because some people look at, especially in the black community, a lot of us look at therapy as like you going to the police or you're like going or you're, it's just like a scary thing. You don't know what to expect. You know, it's a lot of different things to go along with getting therapy. You you know, it, you can be giving up, you know, some of your rights in certain situations. You know, if you say the wrong thing, it can change your life. So it's like it's a big step. It's not just something that someone should just be pushed into, especially being young. I wish that I could have been diagnosed um, a lot sooner because I felt like I wouldn't have felt so alone in certain situations. Like I would have understood myself more. Mm -hmm. So when you said, um, you know, when they for them to learn how to take, you know, whatever their mental illness is and try to find their strengths in it. It, I'm just now figuring this out. You know what I'm saying? At it's 28 years old. Right? So it's like, you know, and that's when a lot of people end up getting diagnosed around like 26, 28, like around that area. Or I would say like between 24 and like 27 is when they get diagnosed. Um, and it's not easy, especially for black people to, for people to actually take you serious and not make it seem like for us. I was literally told that I could not have ADHD because I don't have a criminal record. So for us, things literally have to hit the fan for people to be like, okay, they need some help. Like it has to be something just like by the time you just completely go off the deep end, then they're like, oh, we need to, you know, now we need to do this. So if you're, if you're actually talking about it to someone and you're not falling out on the floor and you know what I mean? If it doesn't look the way that they feel like it should look, then it's very difficult to get help. So that's why it's a big deal, especially your family. So when you go to the hospital and you go to, you know, medical professionals and you have to basically fight for your life with them, you know, for them to try to understand the illness or understand how it's affecting you and it's not fabricated, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Then it's like, it, it, it's, you, you want to at least be able to go to your family and be like, I'm not playing. Like, this is, I'm, right now I'm right. serious and this is, you know, what we talked about. Or, you know, to have some type of support. Because to have it on both ends, like your friends, your family, and, and you're constantly having to defend to everybody, it just is going to most likely make you either shut down, you might, it might trigger you into a manic episode, it might trigger you into a depressed episode. And I feel like a lot of our parents just back, you know, I guess back a generation would just be like, what do you have to be depressed about? Like you couldn't possibly have anything to be depressed right. about because you don't have any bills. Like, <laughs> I don't know what, you don't have not one bill. So I don't even know what you can even, you like, what could you possibly be complaining about? Yeah. So to someone with a mental illness, it's like nobody understands. And it's like, I'm, I become a burden by even expressing it or bringing it up so i don't want to be a burden i don't want you to feel like i'm a burden you know what i mean and i don't want to be a burden to anybody else so that's like one stressor on top of you already having to go through all your other triggers or what you're trying to do and not trying to do and i think me being younger and trying to do everything right was the start of me like not i didn't know you know what could have possibly been wrong but i'm like i just don't want 
to be a burden to anybody else. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing. I was like, I don't want to stress my mom out any more than she already stressed out taking care of all of us. Mm -hmm. I don't, so I want to, whatever I can do to make it easier on her, I want to try to do that, which meant staying out of trouble myself, you know, getting good grades, actually, you know, helping around the house, cooking and stuff like that. So I just try, I started fixating on that. And I just ended up gravitating to cooking um, the most. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, so I think that's when because my grandma used to cook everybody, you know, cooking in the kitchen used to be like a whole family thing. Like every all the women in the family and sometimes men would get in the kitchen and cook together. And it just used to be such a I think of um, soul food, how that movie makes me feel when they're just coming together. I love that that feeling like everybody family is just together and we you know we might not be perfect but we all here and we you know we're enjoying this meal together and memories like that's a big deal for me and i think food can bring like anybody together like if you're having a worse day if you just have some good food you're like well at least i had a good plate of food today like i feel like that's one of the biggest things um Girl, food will make that could affect you yeah. <laughs> regardless of what is going on that was beautiful and I am so um, appreciative of how you communicated that because it helps me. It helps me realize how I have my own biases and projections um, that can, you know, get in the way of our relationship, growing our relationship. Um, so that is extremely extremely helpful i'm trusting that whoever is listening to this or watching this um, also took something away from that if you um have been diagnosed with a mental illness uh or not you know mm -hmm. if you just feel um like you don't want to be a burden or that you're going through something that no one else knows about or you're feeling alone um or you have a family member or a friend who might be going through and processing some things and maybe they're not showing up how they used to or you know whatever the case may be um, do your research like she said and learn how we can better advocate for our loved ones in those moments where they're feeling alone and especially in the healthcare. Um, feel when they're going in for for help when they're seeking that um therapy or whatever and they're getting dismissed we have to figure out how we can advocate for them because if we aren't advocating for them and then they go to seek help and then they aren't advocating for them they're gonna feel extremely alone mm -hmm. you know okay. and and i'm learning uh for me i deal with a lot of my triggers and traumas and just things through writing that's my therapy and I, I do want to go to therapy but I used to always think like there's another way for you know you to to tap into your it's so naive to tap into your spirituality there's always goodness like I'm super opti optimistic <laughs> and I, I'm sure that irritates the crap out of some people but that's just kind of who I am um, but I, I understand how annoying that can be when when people are in spaces and they they're just not feeling it like I can't be optimistic today I don't want to write that doesn't resonate with my spirit I don't want to do yoga I don't want to meditate um, like I was I am still but I was always an advocate for it to the point where I thought that was the answer for everyone and I'm learning that no it's not <laughs> Right, and it's time, you know, it's it's a time for everything as right. well. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, but just realizing that we're all different. We're everybody is different. Um, mm -hmm. Every brain is different. Mm -hmm. I love the book What Happened to You by Oprah and Dr. Bruce Perry. I, I believe that's his name. That book puts a lot in perspective, especially pertaining to mental illness, um, child development, and just how our childhood literally shapes every aspect of our existence and beingness and how we interact and connect with people and even ourselves. So definitely a good book to read. Um, you gotta try it. I still gotta read. Yeah, I, I have it somewhere up this, right on the bookcase. <laughs> definitely tap into see. it when you can. Um, 
but yeah wow I I really um, feel like this is a beautiful episode I don't know if we really need to tap into anything else is there anything that you wanted to talk about anything you wanted to ask me anything you just wanted to check in about anything at all well, firstly, I want to say that I am glad that I'm getting to experience this with you and experience not only your first pregnancy, but just us together getting to know each other. In adulthood. Right. Yeah. As sisters and as people, as humans mm -hmm. in general, uh, it's a beautiful thing just to see the different stages and you know sometimes I might do that, that that same optimism definitely don't lose that like it it's people that need that it's literally you know you're always a light to everyone you know that you're around and don't, don't be you know what I mean I saw to some people it may be delusional you know how they say be yes, delusional me. but it's like that's me we literally <laughs> manifest our entire destinies and to it is one of the hardest things on earth to stay optimistic when you wanna when you wanna you wanna go there and you wanna you like I just wanna and I just you know you like I just wanna be negative right now. Like I just wanna soak in my negativity. Because <laughs> it just feels like, so like oh. mm, right. So and then I'll go back and be like, okay, now then calm down now. Don't give me I wrong. do have this and I do have that. Though I will definitely um honor that space mm -hmm. of just being in the shadows mm -hmm. is what we'll call it mm -hmm. because That's there's so idea. much growth that comes when you're mm -hmm. in those spaces so i know the importance of it of course but i just try not to dwell mm -hmm. in those spaces because i know and i haven't been diagnosed with anything but i know that if i allow myself to dwell in that space I know how low I can get, mm -hmm. you know, so right. I don't allow myself to get there. Right. <laughs> I was just watching a, a video that said an emotion only lasts 90 seconds. And obviously you can be mad for longer than 90 seconds. You for can years. be mad, right. You can hold grudges. You can do a lot of different things. But like how you want to feel in that moment and, and just for that day, for right there in that moment, like you literally, those few seconds, you could be like, I'm about to, this, I'm, this is about to, you know, trigger me into another response that's going to change my whole afternoon and my whole evening yep. or i can just take a deep breath or i can like it's all like a split decision yep. and you know sometimes you you'll be the one to pick me up and sometimes i'll be the one to pick you up and sometimes we gotta just bounce off of each other energy yep. like okay this is you know what i mean uh, i might not want to do nothing all day and i might see you go out and do something i'll be like okay mm -hmm. i'm gonna go take a walk i'm gonna go do something mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna exercise i'm gonna do some yoga today or you know what I mean so yeah. it's just you never know how you're like inspiring someone by simply just picking yourself up for today like mm -hmm. yeah right so. well thank you for mm -hmm. that thank you so much for that I am also so grateful and so appreciative and honored to be witnessing this side of you because we didn't really know each other as adults like right, we you moved out at 17 yeah and i was mm -hmm. so i was 15 we're two years apart yeah so i was 15 so i was just when you were leaving i leaving the house i was just like learning going into the phase i just came out right of. exactly exactly so, <laughs> so and you and um you really stayed out of the house up until what like 24 when you came back I think so for a little bit yeah, I think then, so. Like 24, because yeah. I was in Norfolk for a while. Yeah. Then, yeah. So, yeah. pretty much all of my, like, um, and all of yours too, adulthood, essentially, we really didn't communicate. We did, but we didn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We really didn't know each other presently. Mm -hmm. I right. knew charity from childhood right you exactly. patients from childhood exactly <laughs> so and i had to remember that as well mm -hmm. like just thinking about things and growing myself i was like i have to you have to understand that everybody is growing mm -hmm. and everybody you know is their own person yeah and i've been taking this time to sit back and just see like who you and madison really are just like as people like what are y'all 
just everything about you i'm like this is crazy yo like just to see y'all bloom into this like i think i dedicated a vast majority of my childhood i guess like my innocence in to protecting y'all yes. and but i was happy with that it wasn't because i felt like i had to because y'all was my sisters it was just like what i wanted to do um i wouldn't be able to like rest if it was any other way um and I think that's kind of when I started noticing. I didn't think that anything was wrong with the things that I was experiencing um, mentally and everything. I thought that everybody had like intrusive thoughts and everybody was like anxious about stuff and everybody like had dreams and you know like informative dreams. I just thought it was something that everybody just went through and this was just my version of it for my life. Um, cause we never, nobody ever really talked about okay, it really, yeah. like, even just on TV, anything. Like I just never really seen anything. I didn't know what anxiety was. I'm like me, what, <laughs> what is that? Like, what are you talking about? Like, so yeah. it took a while to actually resonate with that and just go back to my childhood. And that's another big part of therapy is just like unpeeling things that you may have like compressed in the deepest, darkest part of your mind. Yeah. Um, and, and a therapist would do it in a way that it's just like sometimes you just be sitting there like just like shocked like it's just the way that they word it I think my therapist was like um, he was like you yell because you don't really want to be heard so that's why you like elevate when you start elevating your voice it's like you know the other person has already checked out a conversation like you're not even you know you don't want to be heard that's not wow. like your mission that's why you're yelling and i was like and i really thought because i'm like i do want to be heard that's why i'm yelling but the woman was too right <laughs> right i was just like and i just shut up for a minute for once and i was just like okay that makes sense it does yeah. make sense you know or if you if somebody is yelling and you lower your voice then they'll recognize that they're yelling and just be like okay and i was like i really have to start using this so it just I, i've always had an issue with communicating i think because i felt like i was silenced Mm. when I was younger like my like my mom was really open with like our communicating with us and us being able to voice our emotions and you know she was really good with that um but I feel like the outside world would be like you spoiling them or you doing this and I'm like she's just not cussing us out like I don't understand why that you know what I mean like why that's considered like sheltering us um so to try to be able to have those same conversations you would see people you know just getting curt just kirking out on each other and just you know fighting killing like just just can't even have a basic conversation with their mothers their sisters their cousins family yeah. it was just constantly um that you know to see different mothers and how they treat their daughters you know as they're growing into motherhood and just to see their interactions with each other mm -hmm. it was a lot to take in so i didn't see a lot of healthy examples of communication for a long time mm -hmm. so i my only means of communication is if i got certain signals from other people then that would that meant i needed to communicate another way so that i could stay safe and the, so that my sisters could stay safe and that just whatever that entailed that's just what it would have to be so i'm just glad that I, to actually be coming across more positive um examples of communicating even writing too sometimes mm -hmm. if you just write something before you actually see it, you can yes. actually think about whether you want to say it at all you know what i mean or really actually just come to terms with your thoughts and what you want to say yeah. i really started working on thinking about what i want to say first before i say it like no matter what emotion i'm feeling take a deep breath and think about what you want to say first and that has been helping a lot so beautiful yeah we uncovered a lot and i definitely want to do a part two okay i'm sitting here thinking i'm rambling i'm like all right Trey, that's <laughs> another characteristic about holding disorder you get to talk about six different things but if you but stay all, with me right it, it comes all to, makes yeah. sense yes it, all, <laughs> it, it all comes back it all makes sense so i definitely feel like uh, we should do a part two and dive mm -hmm. a little bit deeper into um childhood and and motherhood mm -hmm. and, and mom and you know I just feel like um, a lot of people can relate to being the oldest 
first. Uh, I I keep thinking you haven't watched that movie yet, but there the there's a song in um, Encanto that um, I want you to listen to. Okay, um, I need to watch it. It's it's with the the eldest sister, and she's talking about how that she's been holding so much weight on her shoulders mm. and. Um, give it to your big sister she can hold it mm -hmm. like all of this so we definitely will have a part two and tap a little bit deeper into um, that and your experience um, and yours too and mine yeah as a big sister and as well, well yeah. as the middle sister see it's so funny so. I've never really like thought of myself as a big sister even though I am I know it's weird but I don't know I have the I do because I feel like you're the big sister out of all of us. <laughs> and so that's the middle child syndrome. Right. That's the middle child syndrome. I'm just motherly. Mm -hmm. I'm motherly as heck. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but this is so beautiful. Yes, Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yes. For motivating me to do this. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, this is absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Oh, before we go. Almost forgot. What is one? What is one self-love affirmation that has just been your shiz lately? That's been picking you up, making you feel like you can conquer the world, or just just what self-love affirmation has been resonating with you? Um. And I always say this, but you have everything you need. That is still, and when I just feel like I'm at my lowest point, mentally, spiritually, anything, I'm just like, you have everything you need. Like, whatever you feel like you need, it's here. If you need to go outside and ground, you can do that. If you need to do yoga, if you need a, some tea, if you need, you know what I mean, just something relaxing. Like, you have everything that you need right here. Um, and the more that I believe that, the more that it just comes true even more. And it's like, even when I just catch myself being stressed out about something and then the seeds that I planted coming into fruition or whatever the case may be, it's like I, I had it all along. Mm -hmm. Um, and so far that has been like the truest thing, the truest statement for me. Um, and I think that the vibe for this year and you know, just the energy for this year is definitely going to be backed by that statement. Period. <laughs> Period. Yes. Yes. It's so, true. that is our affirmation for the week. You have everything that you need. Write it down. Put it on a sticky note. Say it to yourself in the mirror. Whenever you are feeling triggered or um, dysregulated, or you know uncomfortable remind yourself that you have everything that you need thank you guys so much for joining us i am sending you so much love for your week and i look forward to meeting you back here next week for another intimate conversation peace <laughs>